Hi, and welcome back. I gave you all a glimpse of my monitor effects chain a few weeks back, and some of you have asked about the EQ that's in there. Reaper's monitor effects live outside the project, sitting between the output of Reaper's mixer and my actual interface outputs, in much the same way as Cubase's control room section. And most of the plugins in this chain are just for metering. But there's also an instance of Slick EQM, currently disabled. And notice this sits after all the metering plugins, so it doesn't affect what they show me. So what's it for? This is what I call the quiet mixing strategy. First of all, let's talk about when it's not appropriate. I wouldn't do this while writing the music, or while tracking, and I wouldn't do it while mastering. Nor would I recommend it for beginners, not for any elitist reasons, but because the biggest issue novice mixers have is creeping volume syndrome, where everything just keeps getting louder. In this case, I recommend cranking your monitors up and trying to focus on what becomes too loud instead of what you can't hear properly. This trick is really for pros, who need to be able to spend whole working days mixing without running into ear fatigue problems. Now, I like to be consistent when I mix. I aim for average levels of around minus 20 dB on the master. Typically, I'll drift a bit higher than that by the time I've finished, but not by so much that my peak levels are clipping. And I've set up the gains on my monitors so that the 12 o'clock position on my monitor controller gives me a comfortable mixing level. This gives me plenty of room to turn it up if I want to listen cranked or check background noise, or to turn it down for already mastered material. But it always returns to that 12 o'clock position for mixing. This means my mixes come out with very consistent levels, like these four from the same session. This saves time when you're sending mixes off for appraisal, or if you're mastering them yourself. And if you're sending them off for mastering elsewhere, it makes you look more like you know what you're doing. But the problem here is that comfortable mixing level I've set is actually relatively loud. If I try to mix for a full 8 or 10 hour day at these levels, my ears are completely shot before the end of the day, and I can't judge what I'm doing properly anymore. So the simple answer is, turn your monitors down most of the time, and just do occasional checks at the normal level. To keep the consistency, I could mark off another lower monitor gain setting and switch between that and my usual 12 o'clock setting as needed. OK, fine. Now, there are two problems that I typically run into when I do check loud. First, I often find I've been too heavy-handed with effects like reverb and delay. Obviously, you don't hear those as well when you're monitoring quietly, so I nearly always find I have to back them off a bit when I check the mix louder. I don't really have a solution to that problem. But if you use mostly send effects for reverb and delay, as I do, then you can assign all your effect returns to a single VCA fader and pull them all back in one go, which might save a little time. The other problem is to do with our hearing and the way it changes at different volume levels. Our hearing is flattest in frequency response at relatively loud levels that you would need to raise your voice to talk over. When we turn it down, we hear relatively less of the low bass and high treble frequencies and relatively more of the upper mid range. In practice, this means that when I check loud, I typically have to correct for over-boomy kick drums, too splashy cymbals, and vocals that lack presence. Which brings me to Slick EQM. The equal loudness mode for the special middle band is specifically designed to correct for those differences. Turning the gain down can flatten out the frequency response when I'm listening quietly. So now I hear the low end of the kick properly, and the sizzle of the cymbals, and I won't be fooled into thinking a vocal part sounds more upfront than it really does. This trick has worked very well for me, and actually I find that monitoring at lower levels can also help me keep my perspective, and make it easier to keep focused on the bigger picture, rather than getting lost in little details. But a couple of caveats. It's important to run the EQ in the monitor effects chain, or control room section, in case you forget to bypass it before rendering. If your DAW doesn't have an equivalent option, you'll need to load the EQ into your master channel instead, and it then becomes vitally important that you remember to bypass it before you render. Of course, there are also risks when using the monitor effects chain or control room approach. If I forget to bypass it when I'm mixing loud, I'll have the opposite problem, and I'll risk making bad mix decisions as a result. So I've refined my method further to guard against this. 
I no longer turn my monitor controller down when I want to mix quietly. Instead, I leave it at its 12 o'clock position, and I drop the output gain in slick EQM instead. Now my workflow is turn on slick EQM to mix quietly, and turn it off to mix loud. That's it. If I've accidentally left it on, I'll know straight away, because my monitors sound way too quiet. And that's all for today. Hope you found that helpful, and thanks for watching.